Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you five beauty and makeup trends that you should avoid in 2022. I started doing this video, I believe two or three years ago, and now I do it every year and it's a tradition. So thank you for being here. I want to start off by saying this is in no way to offend anyone. I always look at like makeup and beauty and everything from a very visual and artistic kind of way. I used to paint for many years and makeup is essentially that. And I see these trends happening and it's sometimes I don't know why they've become such big trends. And a lot of people often are doing a trend or an application that totally is not doing their face or their features any favors. So that's what we wanna end. So before we get into the trends, I would like to thank Wisp for sponsoring today's video. So Wisp is a brand that's trying to normalize all female health issues. I do feel like vaginal health is definitely something that we all kind of just whisper about. And Wisp is on a mission to normalize the conversation in order to empower women and to get the care we need without any stigma or any embarrassment around the topic. Now that I have a daughter, it is important to me that in the future there is absolutely less stigma around female health. I absolutely love their balancing wash. Always keep that in the shower. And I love that you can also order supplements such as probiotics. They also have doctors you can speak to. You can get antibiotics and treatments for UTIs and even the smaller stuff like a contraception. I do feel like that there are more options for male sexual health issues. And I think it's absolutely important that a company not only sheds some light, but also offers a great solution to taking better care of your health from the privacy of your own home. And unfortunately, a lot of these health issues sometimes get untreated because of the embarrassment. So in the future, let's be more open and let's take care of our bodies in every way that we can with the amazing resources that we have today and hopefully even more so in the future. So thank you again, Wisp, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get into the beauty trends that need to end in 2022. All right, so when I started putting this list together, I was looking to do like both hair and makeup and just like beauty trends in general. And then I realized my list got quite long. So the five things today are just regarding makeup. All right, so the first trend is either over powdering the face, like making your look really matte or really adding a ton of glowy products. Now, I know that glowy skin is more in now. And so I see a ton of people doing that, but more than anything, you should look at your skin type. So heavily powdering the face, of course, is for someone with more oily skin. They're trying to make the makeup really adhere to the skin and really last all day. Glowy products are, I mean, we all love a glow. So I understand the glowy products and how we all want to look more fresh faced and just healthy kind of from within. Now, if you have oily skin or textured skin and you add a ton of glowy products, you're just going to enhance that. So basically the tip here is you can do a little bit of both. And of course, if there's a trend out there that you really want to embrace and really wear, you can absolutely do it, but don't do it to the fullest. Say if you have oily skin and you love that glowy skin look that's in, absolutely go for it. This is like the time that your skin can kind of finally shine through, but don't use a face of all glowy dewy products because not only is it going to just melt off in a couple of hours, um, it also isn't going to make your skin look the best it can. So basically the overall tip here is focus on your skin type before following a trend. All right, the next makeup trend is the nose contour. And I made a video on how to correctly contour a nose years ago, and it's gotten a ton of views and so many people still to this day will message me saying, oh my gosh, this has helped me so much in the way I do my makeup. And again, it is because I approach contouring the way I would paint a face. It's all about looking at the shadows and creating them based on the features you already have. Now, if we were to contour everyone's nose the same way, it wouldn't look great, but I feel like that's what's happening. And we'll look at our favorite YouTuber or favorite makeup artist um, doing makeup on themselves and we want to emulate exactly what they're doing. Well, our features are different. So what I'm saying is understand the shape of your nose. So one thing that 
nose contouring does is slenderize the nose. Whereas I've seen so many, say, YouTubers that already have a super slender nose and then they still harshly contour the nose. And I think by doing that, sometimes you almost enhance, say, the volume of your cheeks and maybe that's what you're trying to actually kind of minimize. So look at your face as a whole and look at what features you want to emphasize, which ones you want to minimize or make appear smaller. If your nose is one of those features, then of course, go in with contour. And still within nose contouring, there's another thing that I see people do a lot. And I actually saw a very big, big makeup artist the other day say this. And again, I was like, no, this does not work for everyone. It might work for you and it might work for your Kardashian client, but it doesn't necessarily work for everyone. And that is to extend the nose contour here all the way up to the eyebrows. It, what that does is it elongates the nose. Now with someone with a shorter nose, that might work. Someone that wants to like slenderize the tip of their nose, that might also work because you're making the nose appear longer, therefore it appears slightly more slender. I tried that on myself and I looked weird all day and I couldn't figure it out. And then at night I was like, it's because my nose is like a three inches long. Um, <laughs> exaggerating, but basically the way my eyes sit in balance to my nose it for my for my face it makes sense that my nose ends here and adding more distance or kind of creating length there is not at all flattering on me so again listen to these beautiful makeup tips try them out but don't be a slave to them make sure that they work for you before you continue to use them over and over again all right, the next one is freckles. And although I do see this trend maybe slowly dying down a bit or not as crazy as it was say last year, but I think people with naturally freckled skin is gorgeous. But I feel like freckles or say like a specific nose shape, it is so unique to your heritage, to to you period um so if it's something you don't have to me freckles is just something like you shouldn't add if you don't have it if you naturally have freckles and then you put on say a little bit of foundation and you've covered up a little bit of your freckles and you want to enhance them sure that's great you should um or if you want to add just a tad bit so it looks like you're a little bit sun-kissed sure but when i see this overly freckled fake freckled face. It's just, it, it, to me, it looks like a child cartoon, like, like anime. It doesn't look like a human face anymore. And more so than anything, I think that this is one of those trends that like in 10 years, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, what was I thinking? I, I look like I had like costume makeup on. And I think the trend kind of comes from like, having this really like young like doll kind of look and sure again if you're like 17 this might look cute um but overall it is just it's not a a trend that i'm a fan of <laughs> all right the next one is the fox eye trend and applying concealer just on the inner corner and then here to really lift the face First of all, I feel like every single TikTok video that I've seen on this since last year, um, people always do the, the correct way on their most lifted eye and then the wrong way on their less lifted eye. When I learned this from a makeup artist years ago, it completely changed kind of how I looked at faces. I used to always think like, oh, my left eyebrow is so much higher than my right. And this makeup artist said, everyone's left eye sits a little higher um, and that is because of our heart and the way it pumps blood the left side of our face gets more blood flow i'm not a doctor so don't correct me on that ever since i learned that from this makeup artist i felt like from then on i noticed that almost everyone has this so first of all what's wrong with this trend is that they're showing it to you in a very non honest kind of way because that eye is already naturally lifted. So there's that. And second of all, again, everyone's face shape is different. When I try that trend, because my eyes are kind of more 
I feel like my eyes are a little bit more rounded and a little more set together. When I do that, I feel like it cups my eyes almost and almost makes them appear closer set. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but again, look to see, is that the look that I like? Also, I feel like I have bigger space kind of underneath my eyes or the hollows of my eyes. And if I only do that corner and the outer corner, I'm not effectively covering my dark under eye circles. Could just be that I'm a new mom and the under eye circles are as bad as they've ever been. Um, but again, that wouldn't work for me. Another thing along with this trend which I see a lot of people on YouTube, now that's how they do their makeup because they're like, oh, it's lifting. But then they'll powder or bake all the way down here and essentially you're still brightening up that area. So then I'm like, you're still kind of doing what you did before. So again, I'm all about placing your contour, your bronzer, um, your blush a little bit higher, a little bit further back because that does kind of lift up the cheek and that I think is pretty universally flattering on everyone. Um, but again, try it out and really analyze. Does this one trick, does this actually do my face any favors? If not, ditch it. All right, and the last makeup trend is the over caterpillary eyebrows. Now, I love a fluffy brow. Fluffy brow is one thing, but when the brows are completely gelled or pomade up, and then they're almost like pressed against the skin, that is in no way pretty. I, I don't see how anyone can look at that and be like, that looks so much better than your natural eyebrow does. Now, I feel like now when I wash my face, my eyebrows are just kind of sitting there where they want to sit. I do feel like, wow, what a measly small little brow. And of course, the second I put on some brow pomade, I do feel like my brows come alive. Another thing I saw this kind of brow specialist talk about, and I was like, that's that's what it is. That's what makes a good fluffy brow good and not overly done. And that is where the hair should never really just be brushed upwards. They should kind of be fanning out. So you never want to see like the actual like ends of the brows going completely up. They should go up and then kind of tilt towards the tail end of the brow. So adding too much product, that's not natural flowing. Um, and again, making it stick straight up, that's also not natural. That's not how a brow hair would ever really naturally sit. Another thing too that I see is when someone already has big, bold brows, guess what? You were already born with this trend. You don't need to exaggerate it. I mean, of course, if it makes you happy, of course, do it. But to me, the way I see that is, say that blonde hair was really in and you were naturally born blonde, but you would bleach your hair anyway, just to damage your hair. That's kind of how I see these exaggerated makeup trends sometimes. It's, you were already born with the thing that's in, like there's no need to extra embellish it. All right, and that is it. I hope this video and conversation has maybe motivated you to kind of look at your makeup routine a little bit differently, but I love this type of video because I always feel like there are things that sometimes I'm doing by default and not really thinking about them. And so this just kind of sheds some light on those areas that you can hopefully improve and just make better all around. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.